How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Kevin and I'm currently a software engineer in New York City working at Google. Today I want to talk about the four different habits that I would recommend you guys try and develop as a software engineer to make sure that you guys are becoming as effective as possible. So with that being said, let's get into our first tip today, which is to make your code read like a book. And so really the goal of this tip is to make sure that regardless of who's reading your code, they can understand it. I think a really good litmus test for this one is ideally any code that you write, I like to think that anyone who does not know how to code should be able to read your code and try and give a pretty good educated guess around what your code is doing. And hopefully they're actually not that far off as to what it actually does. If you actually use things like really descriptive variable names, as well as really descriptive function and method names, it's actually pretty possible that you guys can write code that reads like a book. So if you guys are software engineers in the industry right now, it's probably no surprise to you that most of our jobs is actually reading code. In most scenarios, a lot of your job is about reading existing code, understanding existing code, and then adding to it or extending it. And in that way, it's really, really important to be able to read and understand what is happening in a code base. And so because of that, it's super, super important to make sure that your code reads like a book, make sure that you guys are using really descriptive variable names, function names, and actually making your code as concise as possible without losing any readability. So again, really strive for that golden mark, which is that someone who doesn't know how to code can ideally read your code and give a pretty good estimate or guess as to what's actually going on in your code. Another reason that this is really helpful is if you guys have any super low level details or really complicated math or anything you sort of want to abstract away from the reader, you guys can actually just hide that away in a separate method. And as long as you name that method extremely clearly, no one actually has to go and delve into what that method does. For example, if I actually need to calculate the hypotenuse of a triangle, really random example, but let's just roll with it. And I actually don't want my reader to be concerned with those details. I can sort of abstract that into a helper method that's just named get hypotenuse of triangle. And then anytime someone reads that method, they know exactly what they're getting. If they call that method, I'm probably gonna to return to them the hypotenuse of the triangle, or at least I should be. And then they don't have to concern themselves with the math of actually how that's calculated. So any sort of low level details or things that you don't wanna concern the reader with, it's really helpful to abstract that away to helper functions. And again, that's another really good way that you guys can try and strive to make your code read like a book. The next habit that I would definitely recommend you guys trying to develop as a software engineer is to make sure that you guys document the things that you've tried when you ask someone for help. And I think this is one of the harder things Things to do as an engineer. A lot of people don't like to ask for help, but eventually everyone gets stuck. Everyone needs help sometimes. And so I think it's really important that when you do ask for help, make sure that you're doing so efficiently. So when you need help, make sure that you've actually done your own due diligence and you've actually tried to solve the problem on your own. Make sure that when you go to someone with a question, make sure you can tell them here are three things that I've tried to solve this problem. And here are the three reasons why none of those solutions actually ended up being solutions. Not only does this help show someone that you actually took the initiative to try and solve the problem and you're not just coming to them for answers, but it also helps them narrow down potential solutions to the problem and not actually retrace any steps you might have already taken. I also think this is really important because especially as a junior engineer, you want to show your team and your teammates that you're becoming independent. And I think actually coming up with different ways that you could potentially solve a problem, even if they don't actually work in documenting them, I think that's a really good way to start showing independence in the team and that you can take the initiative to get things done on your own. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. I think in a lot of ways, it's a sign of strength. I think it's a really good thing to be able to tell when you need help and when you can tackle something on your own. Again, your teammates are there for you to lean on them. So make sure you take advantage of that, but only ask for their help when you need to and make sure that you do so respectfully by documenting the things you've tried and continuing to offer potential solutions when you're working through the problem with them together. My third habit that I recommend you guys try and develop is actually when someone does end up helping you solve a problem. Anytime someone ends up helping you solve a problem, make sure you document what they did to solve the problem and why it worked. For some people, there's nothing more frustrating than being asked the same question twice. So I definitely try and make sure that anytime I'm stuck on something and I go to someone for help, I make sure that I jot down what they did that solved the problem and why it was that their solution worked. I think this is also a really good way to increase team documentation so that any other time someone runs into that same problem, they can consult a document that you've created. So not only does creating a document, for example, help save other people time in the future, but chances are it'll help you save time too. There have been a lot of times in my career where I've actually run into the same problem twice. And thankfully, because I've documented what sort of solved the problem in the past, I didn't have to go to that person again in the future and ask them to solve the same problem twice. So definitely make sure that anytime you're running into a problem and you need someone's help, you make sure that you document what they did and why it worked so that next time someone else needs help, you don't actually need to spend your own time helping them. You could just sort of link them that document. Or again, if you get stuck on the same problem in the future, you can just reference that same document for yourself. The last habit that I really encourage you guys to develop as a software engineer, and this is potentially the most important one, and that's to plan before you start writing code. I think in a lot of ways, this is gonna be dependent on the environment that you're coding in. I feel like in a lot of startups, a lot of times it's just best to sort of ship code and get something working and then sort of write your test or then figure out what are the pitfalls or problems 
problems with this approach. But as I've gone to larger companies, I've definitely found that a lot of times it really helps to plan out the changes that you're making before you actually get started on those changes. And I think this helps you for a lot of different reasons, but I think the biggest way that it helps you is it just makes sure that every single person is aligned on the approach that you're going with and no one has any problems with what you've actually proposed. And because of this, because all this discussion has happened up front, I think this also makes it very clear with how you need to proceed. I think in a lot of ways, when you actually go through and document the things that you're planning on doing, it makes it very clear cut what you need to do. And I think in a lot of ways that saves you time when you're actually coding. When you're coding without a plan, it's sort of like the wild west. You're sort of just going in, figuring it out, shooting from the hip and just deciding what works in the moment. I think in a lot of ways, when you do that, you might end up shooting yourself in the foot and you might have to go back and forth between a pull request multiple times with the teammate. You might have to sort of rehash comments or have multiple discussions about the same thing because not everyone's included. And in the end, I sort of think it ends up being a headache, not only for you, but for the reviewers too. You sort of go back and forth talking about different parts of the pull request and ultimately you just lose time. So I definitely think one of the best habits you can develop is sort of making that plan up front. And the way that I recommend you guys do this is create a document. Create a document, talk about what the actual problem is at hand, and then sort of propose two, maybe three different solutions and the pros and cons of each of those different solutions. Once you've created that document, I encourage you guys to share it with your teammates and try and solicit feedback from them to understand which of the approaches might be best to tackle and why. Once everyone's given their input and you guys have a way forward, hopefully you've selected one of the approaches and everyone's on board for why that approach works and why it's the best of the three or four that you've sort of considered. And then from there, you can really hit the ground running and you have a very clear roadmap with what solution you're going with, why, and probably how to do it at this point. So guys, those are the four habits I definitely recommend you guys try and develop as a software engineer. Again, those four habits are try and make your code read like a book. Make sure that you guys document solutions when people help you. Make sure that you do your own due diligence when you're asking for help from a teammate. And make sure that you guys create a plan for coding ahead of time to make sure that you guys save your own time when you're writing the code. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. I'll see you guys next time. Pull up on your block and I bleed it. Slide, if I don't drop some, I can't leave it. Walk, I be cold, but the tech got him leaning. Never let the beast get cold, what's that mean? Pull up on your block and I bleed it. Slide, if I don't drop some, I can't leave it. Why got me told, but this tech got him leaning.